Hello folks, this is Jamil Swift from Gunstar Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at the headquarters of Enlo Custom Guns with Marty. How you doing, bud? Good. We're having too much fun here today. We're going to talk about an original Belgian Browning High Power, but before we do that, I'd like to ask you to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel so we can continue to bring you content like this. Marty, we have this uh, early 1960s Pulse 62, because that's when they changed the extractor mm. on the high power. Browning high power, real Browning, it says here, made in Belgium. Um, it says Montreal, so it's also Canadian, but made in Belgium. Browning high power, belongs to Sasquatch back there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Davis that big, mm -hmm. okay? So um, this one is an interesting pistol. It's a, belongs, it's part of his family. And originally I was kind of apprehensive to tell him to customize it. The only thing we changed, we put this nice wood grips with palm swells on it. Uh, these are not real Spiegels, but similar. Okay. Um, and we tried it, and it's a really accurate pistol. I shot it at 10 yards, and it was incredibly accurate. Okay. The sights suck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, because it's a little bump in the front, and... Mm -hmm. The standard rear sight. Yeah, uh, not much bigger than the than the 1911 sights. Yeah. Than the 1911 World War yeah, II sights. World War II sights. Yeah. Okay, and um, and of course the part that there's a couple of things that do bother me. First, mm -hmm. the trigger um, mag disconnect. Mag disconnect yep. and it sucks. <laughs> but if you look at the way this pistol goes, this thing bites, especially with the ring hammers. Mm -hmm. This is nasty. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do to it is we're gonna get the kit from Apex Tactical. Okay. It's a new trigger kit that Apex has that includes a new trigger, a new, how do you call that lever? The, the sear lever. Sear lever, yeah. sear, hammer, which is a no bite hammer, mm -hmm. okay? And I think it includes some springs too. Okay. Then uh, originally I didn't wanna, um, I, Let's try that first, mm -hmm. okay? Then if Dave can't shoot it without bleeding, then if he, if he bleeds, put a Band-Aid on him and bring it back and let you put a beaver tail on it like okay. you did with my pistol. Sure. Yeah. Okay? But let's try that first because, I, I mean, for me, the Apex trigger works perfect. Okay. But my hands are normal. Well, I, I, you know, as far as the Apex, uh, that's that's a new product that uh, you have. You shot one, or you, you've only seen them? I, no, I've seen it and dry fired it. Okay. So right. I'm going to the range with it here. Very soon. soon. Okay. Very soon because it's past prototype. Okay. They're gonna have. They originally designed that for the Springfield SA35. Okay. But it fits this pistol without right, problem. Right, right. So um, they also are making a magwell. 17 round magazines for a gun without a magwell and 19 round magazine for guns without a magwell and 17 and 19 for guns with their magwell hmm. which is kind of cool because with his mitts too the magwell helps him right. you know, adds a little bit of yeah. space to it and i guess they, they told me it's a new company making grips for his magwell hmm. g10 grips okay that are pretty cool too that have palm swells and all that kind of happy stuff and like I said, their, their trigger doesn't have the mag disconnect. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then test it, test fire it, let him fire it, mm. and then we'll decide whether you want a, a beaver tail or not. Now, what we're gonna do too is the sights. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get some SA-35 sights. Okay. Because the front sight is, you know, your standard white dot dovetail. Mm -hmm easy to make a nice dovetail for it and sure and yeah. run it and number two get the rear sight that i don't think that you need to do too much cutting like a novak does okay yeah. uh, I, honestly i don't know uh yeah. I, i've yeah. never I, I don't know if anybody other than springfield makes uh specific sites for the sa35 I, i'm assuming somebody probably will XS, come along xs yeah. makes okay. uh rear sight and front sight for the sa35 okay. Um, but they're tritium. Yeah, well, okay. You, you know, if you're, if you're planning on carrying one, which, uh, you know, the, 
Some of the some of the older guns. I mean, I do know people who carry high powers. They're they're kind of a little more, uh, uh, I'll say, safe queens a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, because they customize. But the thing is about the high powers, they're actually pretty reliable, and uh, they they shoot really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and they do have a they do have a pretty low bore axis. But I guess one of the problems with them is is that uh, like that one. Uh, you're, yeah. co you're correct, uh, you know, I don't have his hands as big as Dave's over there, and it's like, okay, every time I shoot with one of those ring hammers, glove or not, it opens my hand up every time we shoot. Yeah, oh yeah, <clears throat> and this is like, here, I'm looking mm -hmm. at this thing, yeah. and this hammer is on my skin, mm -hmm. in two places, mm -hmm. no, more than two places. Yeah. I would be bleeding all over the place mm -hmm. by grabbing this gun the correct way. Uh, uh, it's, it's funny, I mean, I can see how it's pinching your hand there. I, I can hold it to where it's not pinching. My, my hand is not riding up over the end there, and even then, it, it always amazes me when I shoot it. It's like, oh yeah, bleeding right away. Yeah, <clears throat> so this is a great pistol mm -hmm. to do really cool Marty mods on, <laughs> onto it, because I was telling Dave, uh, we can stipple. stipple the back, mm -hmm. stipple the, the front, front uh, change the parts, mm -hmm. Maybe, oh heck, maybe NP3 the frame. We could, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, he's back there nodding, <laughs> maybe. MP3 the frame and make it into a really good showpiece hmm? of a custom, one-of-a-kind, brownie high power. Because actually, believe it or not, the new FN high power, H-I-G-H, mm -hmm. um, I looked at it. It is not a high power. And I know some people who <laughs> like it, who mm -hmm. love it, mm -hmm. love the way it holds. It's, I don't know, I'm being an old FUD here, an old boomer. They're going to call me boomer, FUD, you name it. Okay, I admit it. I, I am that. It, it has some, it, you wouldn't be able to interchange anything out of a high power into the new FN no, high power. No. And uh, I, I've never fired one of those either. Um, I have handled them. I have seen them. Uh, in fact, I've seen a, a sample of one. And... Uh, they have similar qualities as far as kind of how the mechanism works, but uh, it, it is not a high power. It's not a high power. Uh, in any respect, it's not, it's not a high power. And, and the high power, if the high power wasn't such a quintessential classic, you would not have Springfield Armory <coughs> and Garson mm -hmm. making tons of this dang thing. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have companies like Apex making parts for it. Right. Right. And, you know, Cylinder Slide, of course, mm -hmm. was the old classic when it's still a classic today yeah. in, in uh, parts for the original high power. Mm -hmm. They even made for the Tesis, even though that pistol, even though it got discontinued or something. Yeah, could, there, were, there, was a, there was a difference in the sear. In the sear, uh, the, the sear, hole the was sear, bigger. Well, uh, you know, high power is a... Uh, we, we were kind of discussing this earlier, uh, and maybe Tisa had a reason for doing it, but uh, Browning High Powers are known to bend their sear pins. Yes. And so uh, you could take a sear pin and roll it across the table, and they'll they'll oscillate if they're uh, if they're yeah. not straight. Yeah. And uh, you know that that's that that might have been uh, something that they were trying to mitigate by putting a larger pin in there. Yeah. But putting a larger pin. Yeah. yeah. So this one here is because uh, at first I was telling Dave that I thought this pistol. Oh, let's leave it as is. But the more I look at it, it has some pitting where mm. um, this gun is old. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, this gun could be 60 years old. Mm -hmm. um, is it a gun that we're going to, is it going to depreciate that much? Probably not. I think it's going to be more valuable as a shooter because it is a shooter. Yeah. It is a very, I shot it as is. Oh, well, but... There, there's nothing uniquely special about it that makes it collector's grade. No, no. Um, it's not a low serial number. It's not a, you know, it doesn't. Have, I mean, it, it's in decent shape, mind you. Now, uh, it's gonna, customize, gonna, customizing it uh, would it destroy the original value, but it also has value as a shooter. So it really, yeah. it really makes. It, if you can't even pull a trigger on the thing without bleeding, how how valuable is it? Is no, because opinion. you can't shoot it. <laughs> So it's, it's that. Mm -hmm. um, at least it's not one of those abominations from the 70s and 80s that had the goofy sights on it and thing that looked like a compensator <laughs> with two bolts on the side. Mm -hmm. Whoever came up with that one, you know, should be fired. <laughs> I think they did fire him after they did that complete and total abomination from Browning. It's the competition pistol. Yeah. No, that thing is nasty. But yeah, let's go ahead and try it. Let me, let's get the parts. In. Okay. 
Um, we're going to go to Apex, and I, I know uh, the parts are coming out of the assembly line as we speak. Okay. Um, we're going to drop it off there. They said they're going to put them in for us, bring it back, test it, and then we'll do the sights. Okay. Because the sights are the most important part, I think, other than the guts to make it shootable. Sure. So we can actually shoot it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that, even though the sights suck, I can actually shoot it very, very accurately. Mm. Yeah, I like to say that they they end up being not only they're reliable, they're actually quite accurate. Even with uh, even with some of the older barrels, uh, I mean, they just they uh, they do shoot quite well. Yeah. Oh so. yeah. This mm -hmm. barrel is, like I said, sixty years old. Mm -hmm. It is one very accurate mm -hmm. barrel. It's and very. It's in like I say, it's not it's not in bad shape. I mean, it, it's in good shape. But I mean, it, and the ergonomics of the high power mm -hmm. is top notch. Yeah. So well, with the exception of the ring hammer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, but. Yeah, we'll get it, we'll get it going. Mm -hmm. Hey Marty, thanks a lot for your uh, opinion on it, yeah. and I think we're gonna follow your your suggestions. Cool guys. Hey, again, thanks for watching. Please remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com/gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.